Good morning and happy Monday, November 8th here on the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, the host of the show. And today is our first sort of new segment on the show where we're going to be talking to organizations, community groups, nonprofit uh, entities, and industry leaders here in our great city of Calgary. Over the last two and a half months, we've had great conversations with candidates running for municipal council, and we thought to ourselves, why not dig a little bit deeper, talk about the community groups, and we are honored to have our first community group nonprofit organization on the show, and that is the Women's Center of Calgary, and the executive director, Bo Masterson, has graciously accepted the sort of inaugural role on this new segment of the show, so Bo, thank you so much for doing this. Well, thanks so much for having me. I, you know, I'm really excited to be on the show and I'm really excited that you're embarking on this journey to uncover the beautiful community that um, that's in Calgary and um, yeah, looking forward to sharing. So uh, I, during the uh, municipal candidates, I always asked what the duty to serve was, but I guess it's not going to be that question for this segment. It's going to be, what is the Women's Centre of Calgary? Okay. Well, the Women's Centre of Calgary is a magical place, really. Um, I'll start by just saying that the Women's Centre of Calgary kind of as a whole provides a safe and supportive space accessed by thousands of women in Calgary. We're open to all women and there's opportunities for all women from all walks of life. Um, we have kind of three areas of uh, service, as we like to call them. Uh, one is get assistance. So that's where um, women have an opportunity to come to our resource center um, to access a variety of resources, anywhere from an emergency food hamper to um, a listening ear from a peer support volunteer to a cup of coffee in our space. Um, and then we have kind of our connect with others. And we believe that in order to have that good life, we need those connections with others. And so we work really hard at the Women's Center to create a safe and supportive space in lots of different ways um, to engage with women and have women build connections with each other. So last night, as an example, we had a big pumpkin carving event for women and uh, their families. Um, and it was really exciting. We had space heaters outside and just women connecting informally. We also have more formal connecting opportunities like practicing English, uh, repair your bicycle workshops. Um, so the range is huge, knitting, uh, you name it, and really it's defined by what the community is looking for. Um, the third area of work, uh, which is equally important to us, is we call it work for change, but it's really about uncovering with women what are the issues that we're still facing as women in the society, in Calgary, in COVID, in you know, in the recovery process. And our aim is really to have social issues conversations or to create the space for women to have these conversations in an environment that leads to action um, in some ways. So in some, sometimes our, the Women's Center speaks, you know, in our government relations or works with collaboratives, policy collaboratives, the municipal government and the provincial government to bring those issues forward. But we also try to work together with women to do letter writing campaigns to have women show up and speak to counsel or have their voice in some way heard. So um, for us, that's equally important at the Women's Center. So it's really a broad range of things that we offer. And I would say the other thing I just wanna touch on is how we do the work. We're not really, I would say a conventional um, not-for-profit maybe. We're very grassroots and community-based and almost all of our work is um, in its entirety done by over 200 volunteers. So all the peer support, getting assistance, the facilitators for all the workshops, the hosts, the leaders of the social issues discussions are all volunteers. And our, the way that we operate is really trust-based. We don't do intakes. We don't have women tell their story if they're coming in for an emergency food hamper. We want women to come in and feel trusted with what they need and that they're the experts in their own lives. So it really does feel kind of different here. We, we kind of all say we're peers, even though I'm the executive director, we recognize, you know, we have staff, we have volunteers, we have women, we recognize that there's an inherent power dynamic, but we work very hard to relate as women in our own journeys as women. Um, and we recognize the intersectionality of, uh, you know, what, what our group of women 
is and that there's lots of different experiences and diverse experiences with women, but um, we really try to create the space where we all feel like we play a role. So before we get into some of those key areas that you just mentioned about getting assistance, connecting with others, work for change, and how we do the work, I want to talk about you for a second. How did you get involved with the center? Oh my. Um, well, I um, I came to Calgary about seven years ago now, so I'm also relatively new. I'm originally from the Netherlands, um, and uh, have also done came kind of from an international development or humanitarian um, aid uh, career and and always kind of have held that perspective of wanting to build community together with people. Um, and so when I came here, I first um, worked at a few other organizations where in their community development departments or areas where I could grow that grassroots building things together with people and not the idea of you know I'm an expert and let me help you because you're you know having a struggle in your life um and then when I when this opportunity came up at the women's center um for me this was the ultimate the ultimate end goal I think is like to work with women and at the women's center means working with people not for people and I think that's so big for me in my life. Um, and what I try to, you know, show my kids too is that everyone's everyone struggles at some point in their life. It doesn't matter who you are, or where you come from, and we should be supporting each other. And I feel that way um, in my work, but also in my community. That we can't always rely on services or or things that we have to build those connections with each other. Um, and that doesn't mean that services aren't incredibly important, and so is the role of government, but I think the role of community is often undermined. Um, and so you've been in Calgary for seven years. How long have you been with the Women's Centre? I am just a very recent addition to the Women's Centre. Okay, Center. so I you're joined, right. <laughs> Yeah, I've been kind of on and off maternity leave, um, having uh, a zoo of children, like it, it feels like right now, but um, yeah, I joined in June. Okay. But I've been kind of connected with the Women's Center through other roles in, in other agencies and, and as a community member as well. So I want to I want to turn to the key topics that you talked about in what the Women's Center does. And I want to start with the get assistance part, the first box that you talked about. Now, anyone who's listened to the show or watched the show knows that I traditionally try to stay away from trying to do a deep dive into organizations or people because I want to learn about learn from you about your organization or about yourself. But I do do some research. I, I have to because, I, but I don't take notes. But one of the figures, and I, I pulled it up before the interview started because I wanted to make sure I said this correctly. One of the figures that I saw on your website, which is womenscenterscalgary.org, which will be linked in the show notes, is 39% of women who access our service, so the Women's Center of Calgary, and volunteer their time are living in poverty. That's a, that's a huge number. And it goes on to say in 2020, because 2021 is not done yet, yeah, <laughs> 50,000 contacts were made and the majority of which were women struggling in poverty related issues. This is, this, this, this is huge and your, your organization is doing a service if these numbers are, and I, I don't disagree with them, if that's what they are, you're telling me that's what they are and they are. That's staggering that the majority of people who are accessing your services are living in poverty in one of the greatest cities of our country. What, mm -hmm. what does that say about Calgary? Or is it just because of the time of COVID? I, I do. Well, um, the stats always for our organization have shown high numbers in women accessing the Women's Center. And I think in part, not to get away from your question, but um, I think the Women's Center creates that safe space. It creates a space of like, it, it doesn't matter if you're in poverty or not, you're welcome and you're, you can have that cup of coffee or, you know, use our computers or use the phone. But I think it, it is staggering. And I think we, you know, over COVID, it has definitely been exacerbated. We are seeing, just like many other agencies, 
huge increases in the complexity of the stories that are that are being told, an increase of numbers of stories, especially related to violence and women feeling unsafe in the street, um, even leaving our center at 8.30 at night when it closes and it's dark. Uh, we're having lots of conversations about um, housing and the lack of safe housing for women. Single women are a huge uh, piece of that, but also women with larger families. There's not large enough units and then single women end up at the bottom of the list because they're not considered as, um, as high risk, but actually they are very high risk. So I think, you know, one of the things I've seen in the city over the pandemic and beyond, despite all the divisiveness is I have seen community coming together. I have seen people having conversations that I didn't see the first couple of years I was here. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm hopeful with the new council um, that there will be a renewed energy for these kind of conversations because it is staggering ultimately and we do need to continue addressing it. And we have, um, you know, a poverty reduction strategy enough for all here in the city that many agencies who work with, um, this population are a part of, but we need to be working harder and more collaboratively and um, keep bringing those voices to the table. I think that's the really important thing. I had a recent conversation with um, Mayor Gondek and we talked about that. Like, how are you going to have people who are affected by all these policies and, and things and decisions that are made in, in council, how are people having a voice in that beyond just through their counselor who they may or may not trust? Um, so I think that's important is that we continue to bring those voices to the table and create avenues. One of the things that I've uh, heard during the last few months of talking to Calgarians across this great city is the pandemic has worn a lot of people out. Uh, volunteerism, while we pride ourselves on being one of the greatest places for volunteerism, people are struggling to volunteer because they are working. Um, you talked, uh, you, I mentioned that 39% of those who access, but also volunteer in your organization mm -hmm. are living in poverty. Has your organization seen a decline in volunteerism as well? Yes. So we, you know, as you already shared, reciprocity is one of our key values at the Women's Center. So we believe that um, one, you know, one woman can get assistance and give back at the same time, but we have seen actually a remarkable decline in our volunteer base and are actively recruiting volunteers for those women who are listening, um, because it's important to keep that community going. We want women to feel that there are other women in this community that are here and that um, want to contribute. So yes, we have. So what is the type of volunteers you're looking for? Because this is the great time to sort of pitch the people yeah. who are listening. <laughs> so what are the what type of volunteers are you looking for for the Women's Center of Calgary? Um, so we have lots of different volunteer opportunities. I should start by saying that anything from very informal, come help us organize our basement ahead of the holiday season and our, our big toy room initiative, which I'll get to. Mm -hmm. um, but the other kind of end of that spectrum is um, our peer support volunteers. So those are the very important volunteers that work really in three, uh, approximately three hour shifts during the day from when we open 930 in the morning to 830 at night. Um, and it's really to provide uh, the opportunity for any woman who enters the center to connect with somebody, another woman. So that peer support volunteer would do anything from referrals to the food bank, but also to information about our programs, other organizations, or just a listening ear. Um, and we'll provide personal care items to women um, that they may not be getting elsewhere or not able to get because it's deemed a luxury for many. Um, so yeah, I think that's a very important uh, piece of our volunteer work, but we also have opportunities as facilitators of workshops, practice English, for example, or if, you, if there's women with specific skills that they want to share with the community, we always welcome having volunteer facilitators as well. How can people reach out? How can people volunteer their time? Yes, well, we obviously, uh, you have called out our website. So <laughs> our website has all of our active volunteer opportunities, but you are also very welcome to email info at womenscentercalgary.org. 
which will also be linked in the show notes, everyone. So if you're listening to this, it's in the show notes. If you're watching this, scroll down on YouTube and there it is. Um, That sort of brings us to the second box that you talked about, which was connecting with others. Mm -hmm. How does the organization help connect women using the organization with others? Is it basically uh, like a timesheet? Like, okay, we have these people coming in this day because I've looked at your events and you have great events coming up. Is it just that? Is it just having the opportunity where people can come in and use the resources? Or is there informal sessions where someone says, I need to talk to X and you as the organization reach out and look for someone to fill that gap? We, it's mostly that informal kind of building of connections. So yesterday I, I was just chatting to one of our staff around the pumpkin carving event that took place. And she said, most of the women didn't know each other and they were connecting over all sorts of things that, you know, they may not have known about each other had they not had the opportunity to just have some pizza and carve a pumpkin together. Um, And so we really emphasize those opportunities. Um, We do try to connect women with similar interests. So, you know, when we have an event like we have on November 4th, uh, women in in the energy transition, which is a really exciting um, event for us. That's an opportunity for women to talk about the social issues Um, they face with regard to their interaction with the energy sector and their contribution in the transition. So we're hoping that their women will come together who have that same, um, those same ideas or or finding some kindred spirits in that sense. But um, we do, we have relationship. One of our main things is just, we want to build relationships with women in community and encourage those relationships between women. And so in that, we also play that role of saying, oh, you know, this person was really interested in this or they're looking for this. Let's connect them to this person who also um, has this interest. So it's, it, it's mostly in the informality of things, but we do also try to create more formal channels um, in that way. Looking to get your message out? Looking to get your product heard about? Have an upcoming event in the province of Alberta. For as low as $50 per week, you can now advertise on the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Reach out today by visiting www.crossborderinterviews.ca and click on Advertise Now. If you book your advertisement during the month of December, you will get 50% off. Now, let's get back to the episode. Has has there been success due to the pandemic? Because uh, I, I hear all the time from people in a, pro, a high profile positions, we want to give back, we want to give back. So I can imagine while volunteerism is down, when you reach out to organizations, other organizations, people who might be able to talk to uh, women who are accessing the center's resources, they're willing to do that. Are you finding that people are willing to chat about uh, issues that women are facing in the city of Calgary right now? I think, you know, to your point earlier, people are tired uh, and so women are too and I will say that you know although um, COVID has led us down a path of online um, virtual meetings like yes, this like us <laughs> um, I think that you know there's a really clear yearning still for that in-person um, meetup and so so I think that is really where the gap is actually more than that people aren't willing to talk I think people are a little tired of zoom like zoom fatigue is a real thing um and so you know at the women's center we have stayed open i have to say the entirety of the uh, pandemic ex- in with the exception of two months this year april and may um and so we have continued in some ways to have those in-person connections but people are making their own choices right about where what feels safe for them and what feels good and so i think that's that's honestly been the hardest. I don't think there's a lack of issues and I don't think people are um, tired of talking about them. I think just the platforms are getting a little bit exhausting for people. The third box that you mentioned earlier on in the interview is work for change. What does change look like for the Women's Center of Calgary? I think there's kind of a few different layers to that, if I if I may. Go um, for it. This I is your know, time to talk. Yeah, ultimate, you know, what's, What's important to me when it comes to work for change is really um, that there's change at like a systemic level, right? There are 
very clear issues that um, highlight that kind of difference between um, in the equality of what women experience than men that we have to influence in some way. So the women's center as a whole, we hope to influence that. We, you know, we're, we are, our vision is a world free of oppression. Our vision is more gender equity and the application of a gender lens when making decisions at, at the municipal, provincial and, and federal level. So we, we, we hope for that. But what we also hope and wish for, um, and is just as important, is that women feel a sense that they can make changes in their lives um, in, in whatever way that looks like. So it could be, I am lonely and I need a friend, I know how to seek out a friend, or I am coming to the Women's Center to meet other people. Or it can be women who are all equally, I know um, it must have been two years ago now, we had um, an initiative with a group of women around the snow removal and, and a, the group of women rallied around the fact that, yeah, snow removal in the city was disproportionately affecting women. Um, and because of the strollers and women disproportionately use uh, transit more. So anyway, this group of women came together and we supported them to advocate for better snow removal and were successful in that. And so I think it's that idea too. It's not just how can the women's center as an institution bring about that systemic change. It's how do we, how do we work together with women alongside and make sure that women understand that we, we have something to say and we have change to make. Uh, I was not prepared to ask this question because I didn't know if you'd have the information because I tried to find it and I couldn't find it on the website. I, I will admit I probably didn't do a deep enough dive and it's probably there. Um, what's the success? What is success to the organization? Because if someone walks into uh, a business, and, and this is just a bis from the business community, if someone walks into a business and leaves without buying anything, that's not successful for the business. <laughs> so what is success to the Women's Center of Calgary? Because I'm looking at you and I'm, I'm listening to these stories and I'm hearing, the, I, I read that 39%, I'm going, 39% <clears throat> of people who are accessing your organization are living in poverty. That is horrendous because... It's great that your organization exists, but it's horrendous that we have people living in poverty in this city. So what is success to the organization? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a really interesting question because I, again, kind of come back to the success is in how the women experience their success, okay. uh, which sounds a little, you know, I get it sounds a little woozy or floofy, but, but I mean that in the sense that if a woman on a specific day walks in and needs a safe place to be and they found it at the women's center, that's success. If a right. woman is lonely and came to an event and found a friend and they go home with a new friend, that's success. If a woman feels like they had a say in something that's important to them and they saw something change as a result of it, that's success. So although of course we are wishing for big vision kind of what I clarify, you know, what I shared, we also really believe that there's little pieces to everyone's world that, that we don't even recognize that what seems so small to us on, a, on, on any given day is really big for somebody else. And so I think that's, yeah. No, and I appreciate your honesty and candor there because I always I always try to figure out what is, what does success mean to people, right? Because uh, it means different. And like you said, it might be someone connecting with someone that they didn't know, someone who's lonely and they connect with a friend. So I appreciate organizations like yourself who are doing that and changing the idea that sometimes you don't have places to go. We do have places to go in the city like the Women's Center of Calgary. And I keep saying the full name because I want people to start having these conversations to say, we have these organizations in this community. What is, this, what is the challenge? Before we talk about that fourth one, about how we do the work, mm -hmm. I want to know how you do the publicity. Because I didn't know about your organization until I Googled nonprofit organizations within Calgary. Yet again, it's been a pandemic and I've been sort of focused on my mental, my, my issues with cancer. And, but I want to know how you're getting the word out there because we live in a very diverse community, a city. 
We yeah. have the Northeast, which I currently reside in, which makes up a lot of diversity. There's a lot of ethnicities. There's a lot of languages spoken here. So how are you doing the outreach and the, uh, the marketing of your center to let people know you are here? Um, so we've kind of more traditionally taken that grassroots approach of, you know, word of mouth and I've heard things travel fast. So when we reopened after in, in June, uh, I heard a few people saying, oh, I heard from another woman on transit that you were open. So, so here I am. Um, but I, I, I do think we can do a better job. And it's something that we're, we've been really, you know, thinking about is how do we, where traditionally people knew we existed, we've been here for a really long time, but the pandemic has just created so many fractures in what people know to be true, really. And so we have been thinking a lot about, okay, how can we be more out in community and then kind of bring people in rather than the expectation that people know. So we are working on some different ideas for that, but we also do have um, an Instagram account and Facebook. So in a, in a very actively subscribed to and read newsletter of about um of several thousand uh readers so we you know we definitely communicate that way but we have many women that come here that don't have those access to those so that that network is very much word of mouth and relational i would say um just to, just to interrupt i apologize but for those who are listening yeah you know what i'm about to say Social media accounts will be linked in the show notes as well. So I just I just keep on adding that because that way it gives me a list of things I have to do after the show, but also to give these uh, give the listeners and the viewers opportunity to reach out and potentially follow you guys as well and get the word of mouth out there. Um, I want I want to continue on and talk about that fourth topic that we talked about: how we do the work. It is challenging, and COVID nineteen has made this process of helping people a lot harder because you have to do it socially distanced. We are 20 months into this pandemic. And like you said, people are getting fatigued of doing it virtually. Nonprofit organizations have been under sort of strain because more people are utilizing your services. So how do you do the work in a time when more people are accessing less money is potentially there because people are struggling and uh, grants aren't being able to flow as quickly as they used to. How do you do the work in today's time? It's, it's a million it's really, dollar question. <laughs> it's a million dollar question. And it's also really hard. And it's something that, especially with the model that I described earlier, our organization has mm. been struggling with. We do not like our our work and our services or our community to feel at all like our center is a transactional place. Um, and yet here we are in COVID with plexiglass and masks and no coffee, uh, which is what used to bring people in the door just for a chat and a coffee and a pastry. Um, so it really has impacted um, our way of being. And I think, you know, women's ability to do all the things that we described or talked about in this um in this podcast so we're working really hard to re-envision what rebuilding our community looks like and i think many people in calgary are thinking about that but we're gonna have to think really differently and we're really gonna have to revisit it's not just the covid pandemic that has happened for us um you know we're working really hard on um being a safe space and place for everyone we're working on an anti-racism um process in our organization we are examining what reconciliation looks for looks like for us as an organization and for the women who come through our doors so there's so much in the world that has come to the foreground in the last let's say three to five years and I think we have a lot of thinking to do about how that will impact the way we do the work but ultimately what we don't ever want to lose is that trust-based model of every woman knows and is an, is an expert in their own lives and we want that to always be the way we do things at the Women's Center. It's just thinking about what it might look like now. I, I should have asked this at the start of it because I, I, it just it came to me as you were talking a, a few seconds ago. Your organization, the resources that you provide, are they free of service for any oh. woman to use? I, and I, I apologize for even have to ask that question, but many people might think to themselves, okay, well, if I go to this organization, they might ask me to like, I might have to pay $10 to go to this event or $10 to go get a, you said free coffee, but they may have to pay $10 to talk to somebody. So is it a no. free resource for people to use? 
it's absolutely 100% free, um, everything. So entering our space, engaging with any opportunity within the space, um, cost is never um, a thing. So we're, we're completely free. And I, yet again, I apologize for even have to ask that question. It's just people might not know that. I didn't think about that either. <laughs> and, and that, and sometimes that is the stigma about accessing resources yeah. is what is it going to cost me? And if I go, is it going to cost me? And I know people who have refused access to help because they don't know how much it's going to cost. So I need yeah. to break down that barrier during these shows as well. Um, you have a large you have a lot of work ahead of you. We are ending 2021. We are in the middle of a fourth wave of the pandemic. Uh, people are struggling right now. Women are struggling more importantly from what the stats I've read on your website. Mm -hmm. Do you see a silver lining in 2022? Or do you think that this is going to be sort of the new norm for a little bit longer, that more and more people are going to be struggling? And I hope not. I really hope not. I say that with all sincerity. I hope people are able to get the help that they need, but are able to get back on their feet. But from a nonprofit uh, perspective, from the executive director of the Women's Center of Calgary, what's the silver lining for you? What is the hope that you have going into 2022? It is, you know, I guess the first thing is I have to believe there's a silver lining. I have to believe that there's light. Um, and I, and in some ways, like I described, I see light every day. We were talking, you know, with our staff about really looking for those moments of joy when it becomes really hard. And the more that we look for them, the more we see them and the more that silver lining goes forward. But I have to say in the bigger picture, maybe the silver lining is actually beyond COVID and the, you know, the, the, the dialogue and the discussions and the eruptions that have been happening in the world around gender equity and um, the Me Too movement. And I would add, you know, Black Lives Matter and um, the, uh, the unmarked graves that have been um, found all those things lead us to actually have the conversation about where we're at in this world. And so that is a silver lining in the sense that without that, we cannot move forward. And so that's where I see the silver lining in building relationships together, in moving forward together as a community rather than individuals. And what does 2022 hold for the organization? Is there anything that you're looking at as the executive director to say, maybe if we do it this way a little bit differently, maybe if we uh, continue this project because it seems to be doing well and people seem to enjoy it. What is 2022 look like for the Calgary's Women's Center? Women's Center of Calgary, sorry. It, it may seem like a, a small thing to people. So maybe I should have picked something bigger, but for us, it's really, a rebuilding of community. If I get to the end of 2022 or this organization gets to the end of 2022 and I can feel the vibrancy that people have described to me that the center was pre-COVID, I think that will be a silver lining and a beautiful thing for women in Calgary. And I, you know, it it's just important. We need to rebuild together, not just the women's center, but other or you know. Our community but for the women's center that would be success when people describe to me the vibrancy of like you know tens of people in the center use chatting to each other finding new connections using the kitchen volunteering um speaking about what's important to them that's that's success so yeah i'm hoping for that at the end of 2022 well, in 2022, in November or December, I will reach out again. Yes. We will have this follow up. Have a tour. To, to, they exactly. we'll have to do a video episode. There you go. Um, my last, my last question is this: Talk to the people of Calgary. Talk to the people who are listening to this episode. And I wouldn't even say talk to the people of Calgary because I know your organization does help people in the surrounding communities of Calgary as yes. well: Airdrie, Chestermere, Okotoks. Mm -hmm. So it is not just the Women's Center of Calgary. It's the Women's Center of Calgary, quote, in area. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to the people who are listening. Talk to the women who are thinking, okay, I might need to access this service. Why should they call? Why should they contact you? But also for those who are listening as well, why should they help out? Mm -hmm. 
the Women's Center is a community. You will feel a sense of belonging in whatever connection you make with us. And I think that's the most important. You will connect with a peer, not a professional, but you will get that connection and you will get to speak your truth and you won't have to tell your story over and over again. So that's to women who want to access uh, the Women's Centre for that reason. But for volunteers, what a way to give back, to be able to be a peer, listening ear, or somebody who can do some something so simple as just sit next to somebody and offer somebody a coffee or do a food bank referral, um, or even come and build our holiday gifts for women who don't have that opportunity to um, buy them for themselves. So there's so many ways that you can be in the community, even for a laugh, even for a connection. And I think that's the beauty of the Women's Center. You don't just come for one thing and you may come for one thing, but you will find the treasures in, in what comes after you come for that one thing. You, you just mentioned the holidays and I, I should have, I talked about this before that last question. We are coming up to Christmas. We are coming up to the Christmas holidays. What services does the Women's Center of Calgary provide to women during these tough times when, again, going back to that 39% of people mm -hmm. who access your res uh, resources living in poverty, what services do you provide? Mm -hmm. So for this winter season, we've got, um, you know, we have Project Warmth. Uh, we're partnering with Project Warmth. So we definitely have winter coats and winter gear for women and their families. Um, on a more kind of holiday-esque note, uh, we have our end of year uh, winter toy drive uh, and toy shop. So what we try to do for, uh, I think it's, uh, please check the website, but December 13th to the 20th, I believe. Um, we have um, our Women's Center transforms into a toy shop and a women's gift shop. And uh, by shop, I mean free shop. Uh, and women can come to um, pick up some gifts for their children and also for themselves. And it's a great opportunity, one, to volunteer, two, to come and get those gifts um, if, if you need, but also if you work at a specific company or in your workplace and you want to do a toy drive or with your community, it's a great time to, yeah, do a toy drive and bring those toys and gifts um, to the Women's Center so that we could, um, yeah, bring that to life because it's more than 800 women and their children that access that at the end of each year. Um, you can obviously also donate uh, to the Women's Center, to the toy drive specifically, or to the Women's Center in general, um, which will bring smiles onto women's faces um, in so many different ways. As I've already described, I don't need to get into that, but yeah. Um, Bo, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Um, I, I, I'm always impressed when I have conversations and I don't know what I'm going to get out of it. And I've gotten a lot out of this 40 minute conversation already. And I appreciate all the work that you and your volunteers at the Women's Shelter of Calgary do. And I hope people learned a little bit about what your organization does because I feel like we've just scratched the surface. And like I said, yeah. November, 2022, we will have this another conversation about this, but thank you so much for having this conversation. And uh, I hopefully have shone a spotlight on your organization and hopefully people do take the time and learn a little bit more, but also if they are struggling to access your organization. So thank you so much. Thank you for creating the time and the platform, honestly, to have these conversations because um, yeah, it is important that we find connections in, in this city. And, and I hope that as a result of this, some will find a connection in the Women's Center and, and our community. Thank you. Um, for everyone here at the Cross Board Interview Podcast, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, like I said earlier on in the episode, the links to the Women's Center of Calgary's uh, social media website, email address are in the show notes. Please check them out. Please go and learn about the organizations that are in this great community, but also our uh, information is down there as well. Hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening to this as well, so that way we can get the message out even further. Um, have yourself an excellent rest of your Monday. We'll be back tomorrow morning with another great episode. Thank you so much for doing this, Bo. Have yourself an excellent day. You too.